So it's pretty obvious right now. If you're into the watch game, the market is hot. I mean, we're not just talking about a little hot. The fire just keeps on blazing hotter and hotter. Take a look at that yellow gold Daytona with the green Dow, or as people call it, the John Mayer Daytona. Will it get to 100,000? Even well after Rolex already did their releases and it did not become discontinued, the prices seem to still be very strong. Of course, there was a mild correction, but the one watch that I feel that the prices continue to dramatically increase is the stainless steel Daytona with the ceramic bezel. So you've heard this before that usually the stainless steel sports models are the ones that increase the most. The Daytona has had a waiting list since the early 90s. So it's a watch that's always been in demand. Here's the crazy part, all right? Watch retails for $13,000, $14,000, something like that. I can't even keep up with these things nowadays. The thing is, when they were selling for $24,000, people were saying it was too much money and that it was crazy and they didn't want them. They said, no way, it's too much. Then they creeped up to $28,000 and people said, that's absurd. Have you looked at the prices lately? They are almost at 40,000. I have clients calling me and telling me, are they really at $40,000? Is this for real? Yes, it's for real. What is causing this? Well, it's pretty much just the rise in demand, okay? When you really think about it within scale, that a 5980 is over $100,000 and the retail is not even all that high, considering that I used to sell these pieces at 38,000 and they're going for 100, what is it to not say that the Daytona cannot do the same? I feel like it's the next 5980 at this point. With $40,000 in prices, I mean, what is gonna be the limit? I don't know. The market is the one that's gonna have to pretty much state what's gonna happen with that. What's the craziest thing about it is that when these watches started going over 30,000, I said, no way. When they hit 35, I said, eh, it's getting a little bit crazy. I can't tell you how frustrating it is every time I buy one of these watches and I sell it to a client, and then I go to sell the next one, and it costs me more than the previous one I sold. At some point, I feel like just stocking up on inventory going on vacation for two weeks. And when I come back, I'm gonna make the same amount had if I would've stayed because the market just keeps rising. If you haven't subscribed to my channel already, go ahead and hit that button right now. And don't miss any of the epic content on the way. This particular one that I'm wearing right now is the one that I got off of my uncle and it took a lot, a lot of persuasion to let me buy it off of him. And at that time when I bought it, I would say the market was at 22, 23,000. And I had got it pretty close to retail and I thought it was such a score. You could only imagine the way I feel now. Do I feel that this watch is worth the $40,000 for the consumer that's buying it? Well, it's the same thing like a 5711. Do I feel that a 5711 is worth 90 Gs? I mean, I love Patek and all, but I kind of rather buy one of these, in my opinion. And I don't necessarily like the white over the black. I always like to ask people which one they like better. I feel like 50% of the people want the white, 50% of the people want the black. Ironic enough, when the previous models were around, with the stainless steel bezel, the 116520, the black was always hotter. But I guess now, with the contrast of the ceramic bezel, the white kind of gives it more of a throwback feel. And I've said this before. Going back to the previous version, here's another thing. I did a video maybe nine or 10 months ago where I had gotten a new style buckle, stainless steel bezel Daytona, and I was thinking about keeping it for myself. And I had asked you guys, the viewers, if I should keep it or sell it. Many of you guys told me just to sell it. Damn it, I shouldn't have sold it. I'll tell you why. At that time, that watch was selling for $16,000. Do you know how much they're going for right now? I just got $23,000 for a naked one, a naked scrambled cereal. 
Who would have thought? These were watches again that were going for $9,000 five to six years ago. The Daytona is that watch that's always been a collectible and that always will increase. Unfortunately, I feel like the two-tone never follows suit with that. It's usually gonna be the gold ones or the steel. And personally, I think that the steel ones are the ones that are gonna make always the most dramatic increase per dollar per pound. So the question that everyone continues to ask me is, will it continue to go up? I think an easy way to gauge this is as follows. If the green dial Daytona continues to go up after the fact that it's not discontinued and all that, and gets to 100 and stays there, I think it's only safe to say that this can go up to 50,000, which would be half the value. Platinum Daytonas are over $100,000 right now, and they only simmered down a little bit after we found out that they were not discontinued. Where everybody sat there, all the experts said, oh my God, everybody got burned. Everybody got burned with the green dials and the platinum. I call BS. If you're one of those guys at home that has four or five of these, clamp them down and hold, and you'll see what happens. There isn't enough of them to go around and every single day there's another enthusiast that wants one and just can't get it. Same goes for this watch. I can't tell you how many clients I know that are holders. They don't sell their watches. They're good clients at their ADs and they're still waiting for this watch. They've called them three or four times for the black version, but they don't get a call for the white one. So that is what's always gonna maintain the increase in price. It feels different now to wear this watch thinking that it's a $40,000 watch. I mean, not that I'm that much happier or that more vain or anything like that, but I used to love this watch knowing it was only a $15,000 watch. Hey, I used to enjoy my Daytona when they were $9,000 watches. I just love the way it looks. The Daytona is one of my favorite watches from Rolex, and it's why it will always have success. Take a look at the yellow gold versions without even the fancy green dials. We would have never thought those prices were gonna be that high. I was stunned to find out the prices of what the yellow golds are going right now. It's like, sometimes you sit back and you don't even think about the prices because you're just in the business and you're selling. When I realized that the Daytona with the Paul Newman dial that used to be my dad's that I bought off of him is going for almost 40,000 is like, a part of me wants to just sell and cash out, but that's more of a passion purchase. I bought it because I like the watch and because it has a meaning to me, and I'm not gonna sell it. But if you got any Daytonas at home right now and you're thinking about selling and making a move, maybe now is the time. And if you're thinking about buying one, right now might be the time too. I keep telling people at some point you gotta get on the bus before it keeps on going. The meteorite dials is what we're really gonna see some stunning numbers. We're gonna have to only wait and see. I mean, when it comes to the Meteorite Dials Daytona, I think that my personal favorite one would probably be the yellow, maybe even the white gold. However, there's not too many options around in rose gold with the Meteorite, so I guess that if I was in line at the boutique, that's the one that I would be getting, the rose, with the Meteorite dial. It just pretty much shuts down all the other dials. Comment below if you agree or disagree that the Rolex Daytona and stainless steel ceramic bezel is the fastest increasing Rolex in price right now. And if you like this video, like and share it. Also, subscribe to my new channel.